and welcome to worship here at Brambleton Presbyterian Church on this very special Sunday. We are honoring the graduating class of 2020, all the seniors here in Loudoun County. So much of their senior year did not turn out the way that they hoped that it would, but I'm happy to say that we did not have to cancel this service. This service is entirely dedicated to celebrating and honoring them, praying for them and sending them off. Join me now as we open this worship service in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this beautiful opportunity to sing your praises and to celebrate the successes of many students here in Loudoun County, the high school 2020 graduating class. Lord, thank you so much for your presence in our lives and we offer this worship service to you now. May you be honored in and through all of it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
that was awesome. The scripture passage that I will be reading today is perfect for this occasion. It's perfect for all people who are staring into a wide open future. This is God's word for God's people. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord God, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come to me and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all of your heart. God's Word for God's People Hello everyone and congratulations to the class of 2020. I'm Lewis Crofties and I'm so pumped for what's about to happen. Today we're celebrating you, and by you I mean all of you, class of 2020. We're celebrating the fact that you've made it to the end of high school. Is this a year anything like you've imagined? Probably not. But your achievement and your high school years have been incredible, and moving to the next stage of life is absolutely a reason to celebrate. Now before we get started, there's only one thing you need to know. This celebration is for everybody in your family. So bring everybody into the room. And if you have family members who aren't in the room with you right now, go ahead and invite them to the video chat with you. Oh, and throw on the cap and gown if you want to, because this celebration is starting in three, two, one. Starting now, I love that phrase. Because today, not only are we celebrating where you've been, but we're also talking about what's next for you as well. Let's start with where you've been. And most of you have grown up here at BPC. From getting your first Bible a decade ago in second grade, yeah, it's been that long. And learning about the meaning of communion with Ginny Darling and Family Ministries. To my favorite memories with you, the adventures of OTE and the high school retreats, and becoming full members of BPC, with your confirmation and starting to lead and support BPC when needed, like serving in the nursery or playing in the band. You know, one of my favorite memories is just seeing one or two rows of chairs filled by you and your friends on Sundays. Now I'm not sure when we're gonna be back physically. So chances are, the last few years, we're filled with some amazing memories. Some big wins, some big losses, some major milestones and some really hard work. And today, we want you to share some of those moments with the people around you. In fact, before today is over, I want you to choose a photo that represents your time in high school. It can be a graduation photo, a sports pic, or a goofy picture with you and your friends. Then make a note about something you'll remember from this year and share it with people celebrating with you today. You can talk about it at dinner, send it in a family group text, or post it to your social media. You don't have to make a speech or write anything fancy. Just share one photo of something you want to remember. Your friends and family will want to hear from you because after all, you are the reason they're celebrating. Now let's talk about what's next. By this point, you've probably already made some big decisions about what happens next in your life. And there'll be many more decisions after that. Maybe more than ever before, the choices you make in your life are up to you. And starting now, your decisions about who your friends are, what you do with your time, the kind of people you date, how, how you handle your money, how you treat other people, will have big effects on the quality and the direction of your life long after high school. And maybe that kind of responsibility is exciting. Maybe it's terrifying. Either way, it's a lot of pressure. So let me take some of that pressure off. Here's what I want you to know. Making decisions for yourself is not the same as making them by yourself. Is your responsibility growing? Sure. 
but you're not on your own with it. There are family members around you right now who care about you and who are here for you anytime you need advice, encouragement, or just someone to listen. And there are people outside of your home who know you and love you and will be cheering for you in the next stage of your life. Well, thank you, Lewis. Seniors, graduating class of 2020, I am going to pick up right where Lewis left off, and that is with the big question, what next? Your future, what will it hold? So many questions to be answered. And now you are an adult, and so you get to drive toward the answers. You're in the driver's seat. So many questions. As you embark upon the journey that will be yours, I want you, as your pastor, to remember two things. The first is that life is so much harder than we ever expect it's going to be. So often, there are disappointments we just never imagine will be the case. And this is probably something that I really don't need to say to all of you, because this senior year, your senior year, has been full of twists and turns and disappointments. Not at all what you were expecting last fall when you walked through the doors of, of your senior year. So, life is bigger and harder than we ever expect that it's going to be, something you already know. And as you go through your life, there will be lots of moments like these when you're looking at a future and wondering what it holds and asking so many questions. And often when you're in that place, it feels a little overwhelming and there's a lot of anxiety. So I want you to remember something else. It's something so important. It's something that God said through a prophet, Jeremiah, many generations ago, when God's people were looking into a future that was uncertain. They had so many questions they didn't know how to answer. And so God raised Jeremiah up and spoke through him these powerful words. I read them already, but I want to read them again to you because I want you to remember them. I want you to tuck them in your heart and take them with you. Listen now for God's perspective on answering the questions about your future. Jeremiah, speaking on God's behalf. I know the plans I have for you, plans for your well-being and not for your harm. I have plans to give you a future that is full of hope. So call upon me, pray to me, Seek me, and I will answer, and I will show you the way. Friends, I love what Lewis said a moment ago. Making decisions for yourself is not at all the same as making decisions by yourself. You're an adult now, but you're not alone. You shouldn't try to make all of the decisions about your future on your own. You should lean into the community of support around you, primarily God. God in whom you have been building your faith over these many years that you have been here with us at Brambleton Presbyterian Church. You can trust God. You don't have to make your decisions on your own. Call upon God, seek God, and God will guide you. Not only that, as Lewis has already mentioned, you are surrounded by parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and friends who want to help you and support you. And I'm on your team. I'm on your team too. Just because you move on to wherever God is taking you next, I'm still your pastor. I want you to put me on your speed dial. Call me any time of the day and I will answer. I've done it for many students in your place, and it is my honor to extend that offer to you as well. And there's one last group of people that love you and will continue to welcome you home every time you come. That's your family here at Brambleton Presbyterian Church. We are so proud of you. We have watched you grow up. I have baptized some of you. I've had conversations with all of you, significant conversations about your life and your questions and your hopes and your dreams. And it doesn't stop now. Brambleton Presbyterian Church, 
We are here for you. We love you. We want to be on your team as you go into whatever your future holds. So again, life is always so much bigger and harder than we ever hope it will be. We are constantly confronted with disappointments we never saw coming, but we're not in it alone. You are not in it alone. You are surrounded by God's love, by your family, by this church. And so again, let me read to you one more time these magnificent words from God's ancient prophet, Jeremiah. Ancient, but oh so modern. God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for your well-being and not for your harm. I have plans to give you a future that is filled with hope. So call upon me, pray to me, seek me, and I will be found, and I will show you the way. We're so proud of you, class of 2020. So proud. And now I want to share some exciting words from a few of our graduates. Only I'm not going to share them. They're going to share them with you. I've invited some of the graduating seniors from our church to share some hope and some faith with you. So please welcome them, open your hearts and your minds to what God is going to say through them in this moment. Hi, my name is Maddie Wardell, and I've been with Brampton Presbyterian Church since I was 10. My family and I went to a large community church when I was growing up where we never felt at home. When I was in fifth grade, my parents thought it was time to find a church better suited for our family and decided to check out Brambleton Presbyterian. Immediately we felt welcome and loved the family atmosphere. It wasn't hard for me to make friends quickly and not long after Brambleton Presbyterian became my home. I now have lifelong friends and mentors that I will forever be thankful for. I have so many great memories from over the years with Brambleton Presbyterian. My favorite memories are from the three years I went to OTE or On the Edge, our middle school camp. I learned so much all three years and the activities run through the camp were so much fun and I made stronger connections with God, my friends, and my leaders. I have had so I have had so many faith lessons that have stuck out and stayed with me, but my favorite was when I was a part of a leadership Bible study group led by Virginia. It was a small group of about five girls and we met once a week for a couple of weeks. We talked about the woman in the Bible, specifically the book of Ruth. This has been one of my favorites because I like the group itself and the topic because it was one I haven't gotten the chance to talk about much, but was very interested in. And due to COVID-19, I didn't get a prom, last senior breakfast, senior trip, decision day with my friends, graduation party, a normal graduation, or a final goodbye. All these things are things you look forward to and work towards your whole life, and I never would have thought that this opportunity and the me memories I, I had always dreamed of would have been taken from me without my control. Although COVID-19 took away my time to celebrate my accomplishments the way I wanted, it has not taken away my accomplishments themselves or the plans I have for myself in the future. I know God has a bigger and better plan for me and something good will come out of everything that has occurred in these past few months. I understand I could have it worse and I plan to make the most out of a situation and do the most I can to celebrate what I have accomplished. My life, birth, my life first has been something that has helped me through some tough times. I chose it a couple years ago during confirmation and I chose it again this past summer when I was in need of some inspiration. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It has become something I live by and has helped me when things got hard. I challenge my fellow seniors to go into college with an open heart, no regrets, and a sense of accomplishment from the past 12 years. Staying close to God and your faith can be hard when you go to college. Therefore, I also challenge you to find a church in our faith-based group and not lose sight of what is important to you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna Blaisdell and I'm graduating this year from Rockridge High School. I have pretty much grown up in the church. My grandmother, Beat Blaisdell, started up the nursery that occurs every Sunday service. I don't remember much from those times, but I do remember so clearly her reading us children's Bible stories and teaching us love and empathy and compassion. The foundation I developed there was then built upon in many years of the youth program. 
One of my favorite memories was probably when we went to the girls' lake retreat and I was not only able to grow closer to God, but also able to grow closer to other ladies my age who were also believers. At this retreat, I also learned another lesson of faith from, su from a subject that I was really not expecting at all, science. Anyone who knows me well knows that I'm a huge science nerd. I pretty much like live and breathe science. I, I love it. But anyway, um, there would be times where I would question God's existence because of the information I would learn from science. However, many of these questions were answered in a video series that we watched throughout the week. And here it was I was able to finally make a true connection between my two worlds and had scientific proof of God's existence. I have been in school since the age of two or three, which means I've been in school for 15 to 16 years. But of course, thanks to COVID-19, the best three months of my grade schooling career were canceled. I didn't get to have my last prom with my boyfriend of two and a half years and my gorgeous expensive dress that I got a week before COVID hit from a store that does not allow returns. I didn't get to see my friends, which made going to Rockridge bearable because senioritis hit me like a truck and I had absolutely no motivation to do any work. I didn't get to go back to biotechnology class that the academies allowed in to get the test results back from the GCMS that would complete my beloved science fair project because that day I was supposed to get them was the day that school closed. I didn't get to go to my science fair that I was sure my partner and I would have won due to the, to the importance of our project that could help monitor climate change. I didn't get to play my last gigs at School of Rock, which was supposed to be my last hurrah before I graduated. I didn't get to travel the United States with my bands, with my band and play different gigs in different cities. My life was pretty much canceled and switched online. Quarantine has been extremely hard for me. I am very much a people person and not seeing my friends or pretty much anyone drove me insane. I lost a friend to COVID on March 26th. I have had friends who live in unfriendly and unsafe households. I struggled to find the willpower to do pretty much anything productive or anything at all. I've, I have friends who have forgotten how beautiful and amazing they are due to the aggression and hate against those with their skin color. I have soaked up the pain of the world like a sponge. I have pretty much isolated myself. My mental health plummeted. However, God saw this and sent love my way. I continue to look back to my favorite Bible verse, Proverbs 31, 25, which says, she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. Two of my best friends, Maddie and Greta, who also attend the church, have also shown me so much love and compassion. They always help me find a way to get back to God, even when I am in the hor even when I'm lost in the horrid actions of the world. My family, my boyfriend, and my other friends have reached out to me and have been keeping my spirits up. Of course, I can't forget to mention my rediscovery of Pokemon Go, which have has kept me active and entertained where all I've pretty much been doing is completing challenges to get my legendary Pokemon, but y'all should see my shiny Garatina. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> for my fellow 2020 graduates, I know we are so excited for the next chapter of our lives, but it's important to remember who we are. We will face temptation, change, pain, and more, but we will not be alone. We will have God. Congratulations to you all and I wish you the best. Hi, I'm Jamie Ashkar and I'm a member of Brambleton Presbyterian Church. One of my favorite memories during my time with the church was the 30-hour famine. I loved that as a church we were raising awareness and money to help those in need, as well as strengthen our relationship with God. There have been so many lessons and sermons that have resonated with me throughout the years, but there is one faith lesson that we talked about recently in high school youth group that has really stood out to me especially during hard times like these. We talked about taking the time to get closer to God during the COVID-19 pandemic and why it was important. This faith lesson inspired me to take advantage of quarantine and strengthen my relationship with God by praying more often and finding Bible verses that give me hope and peace. As a senior, I lost a lot of things due to the pandemic. I lost my senior prom, 
my last softball season and senior night, and worst of all, I lost the chance to walk across the stage to receive my high school diploma. At first, I was devastated and was having a really hard time. However, Brambleton Presbyterian Church provided me with outlets and resources to help me get through this challenging period in my life. In March, when schools were closed indefinitely, I was really struggling because my 18th birthday was coming up and I was not going to be able to spend it with my friends. Um, I remember the night before my birthday, I decided to join a live prayer session with my mom. Um, that night, Pastor Elizabeth and Mr. Pilot led the group to sing happy birthday to me, as well as pray for me, which made my birthday so special and so memorable. Um, my life verse is Corinthians 13:13. 13, 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is my life first because my faith is important to me and I have hope in God's plan. But what is most important in my mind is God's love for us and the love that I can show for those around me. So as we embark on new journeys, I challenge you to continue on God's path and show God's love for us through actions and words.
worship team. And now I'd like to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Glorious and gracious God, we are so grateful to you today for these graduates, young men and women you have formed and gifted for such an hour as this. We're so grateful for them. May each one of these graduates fly as an arrow of truth, to a society often muddled about right and wrong, as an arrow of compassion to the unloved and the unwanted, and as an arrow of light, pointing to a day when the Lord Jesus will reign over the earth. Lord God, grant to them the gift of faith, the gift of loving your word, a heart for prayer, a song for your praises, and a sensitive ear to your spirit. Empower them to be ambassadors of your grace and peace and hope. Go with them, surrounding them with a sense of the direction you are guiding them in. Make them ever sensitive to discerning your voice, Lord. Help them to remember how much we love them and how much we are going to be here for them. And I want to pray a special prayer for all of the parents who have supported these journeys all the way to this point. God, I pray that you will bless them too, for as their lives change, they have some days ahead where things will need to be navigated in new ways. And so I pray that you would fill them with hope and discernment as well. Lord, we love this church. We thank you for it. We pray for all of the members who are joining in this worship service today, whatever it is on their hearts and on their minds that they need your help with, that you will touch them in those precise places. And Lord, we pray for our world. We pray that you will quickly bring an end to this virus and that you will help us all to find ways to resume a sense of even keeledness in our own lives and where we can, fill our hands with gifts to help others who need a little encouragement. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to call your attention just to some of the events of the life in the life of the church. You can find them on our website, also in our social media sites. I'm, uh, you'll be able to see those sites addresses there on the screen as I'm speaking here. Also, want to uh, lift up that this is a time when not only do we have high school graduates moving on, but there are some other students moving up in the life of our church now as well. I'd like you to take a look at this wonderful slide that Ginny Darling, our Family Ministries Director, has put together so that we can honor these graduates as well. And of course, I want to thank you for all of your generosity to the church, for it continues to fuel our efforts to be here, a light in a community that needs God's hope. Thank you. And now receive this benediction. May the love of God the Father Almighty, the fellowship of Jesus Christ the risen Son, and the power, the abiding comforting power of the Holy Spirit fill you with a sense of God's presence as you 
answer the question in your own life, what next? In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace and go in hope. See you next week, everyone. 